Today we're going to be talking about uh, how to locate zeros of polynomial functions. Number two, we're going to use as an example to show you how to use the graphing calculator um, to help you in this process. So the first thing I want you to do is in the graphing calculator, type this polynomial function in. So put it y equals, type in 2x to the power 3, 2x cubed, all right, plus 5x squared. minus 7x, and minus 3. <clears throat> and you're just going to hit graph. All right. So obviously this graph goes up through a, the x-axis, way up here, comes back down, and turns back up. All right. So if we were to zoom out, we could see the whole graph. But right now I'm really only worried about locating where the zeros are. So right now I want you guys to understand that we have a zero located right here, we have a zero right here, and a zero right there. So on your, your graph, looks like we're at a negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So on your, on your paper, I just want you guys to go down to where between a negative three and a negative four, and I want you to put a Put a point between the negative 3 and the negative 4. Then I want you to put a point closer to the 0, between the 0 and the negative 1. So between 0 and negative 1. <coughs> okay. And finally, it looks like it's between what? A 1 and a, <coughs> one and a 2. There's the 1. There's the 2. So between 1 and and a 2. Now, this is not an accurate graph, but if we were to draw the graph, it goes up through this point, goes way up high, then it comes back down through here, and then bottoms out. It goes a lot higher than it does lower, so it's going to bottoms out, and then... Now, by the way, what would we call this up here? What would, just as a review, what would we call that? <coughs> the the, 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 the edge the remember. Good. It's the uh, re relative maximum. Good. Excellent. That's the relative maximum, which make, makes this point right here the what? Good. Now, I didn't ask for that, but that's what those are. Okay? What it asks for in question number two, it says, between what integers are the zeros located? Okay? And you can see that the zeros are located between a negative 4, a negative 3, they're located between a negative 1 and a 0, and finally the last 0 is located between 1 and 2. And we did that by looking at the graph. Right, just finding where the zeros are located, and it says, basically the question said, between which consecutive integers are the real zeros of each function located? Well, they're, they're located between all of these. So this is actually right here. That is the answer to number two on your assignment. Do you have to draw the... Uh, Do the graph? No, we're doing this in your journal so that you understand what you're supposed to be doing on the first part. You can right? the answer to number two? Correct. Now, we used a graph to look at this, but we can also look at our table. So everybody, I want you guys to look at your table. That second graph, we're going to look at our table. And I want you to see a pattern here in our table. I'm going to highlight something here real quickly for you. I want you guys to look right here between a negative 4 <coughs> and a negative 3. What happened? It went from negative to pop. Yes? Yes. Sure. I want you guys to understand, technically, the number 0 is located between a negative 23 and a positive 9. So between what two integers is the 0 located? Between a negative 4 and a negative 3. Because it went from what? Negative to positive. As we scan, let's find another one. Ooh, it went from negative to positive, and what was that? What was our other answer? It was between what? Between a 
1 and a 2 because, once again, where is the 0 located? It's located somewhere between a negative 3 and a positive 19. All right? Ooh, one more. Right here. Between a 0 and a negative 1, once again. So if you look at your table, if it goes from negative to positive or goes from positive to negative in your y values, what have you found? You found somewhere that a zero is located between these two integers. So you can use a graph or you can use a what? You can use your table. Okay, use a graph or a table to figure out where your zeros are located. Well, the number of our actual zero. That's what we're going to do now. We're going to use the graphing calculator to find our actual zeros. So what I'd like you guys to do right now is hit the graph button. I want everybody to have this graph on their graphing calculator right now, please. I'm going to pause and let you guys get there. Now that you have your graph of your polynomial function in the graphing calculator, we are going to figure out where this zero is, where this zero is, and where this zero is. So everybody hit second, trace, number two. Second, trace, number two. And what you're going to see is you're going to see a little cursor on the screen and it says left boundary. So before we do this, let me take a picture of this. If I want to find this zero, everybody, if I want to find this zero, this side is going to be my left boundary and this side is going to be my right boundary. So what I have to do to get over there is you're going to have to hit the, the left arrow button to move your cursor over to the left. So right now I'm just moving the cursor. Yes, sir, did you? Yeah. Can you have some battery? So notice right here, every time you hit a left arrow, you'll see your cursor moving. So right now, let me know when you think I'm on the left side of the root. You're now. I'm now on the left side of the root. Good. So right here, I want you to press, if it's, once you're below the root, right here on the left side, press enter one time. Press what? Press enter just once. Now, I want you guys to understand, in the nice TI-84CEs, the, the ones that have the color graphs, you'll see that, what does it create? It creates a left boundary. That, yeah, that dotted line, you're right, that dotted line is the left boundary. Okay? Now, what's it asking for? It's asking you to, to locate and determine what the right boundary is. So you're going to move the arrow to the right. See, I'm technically, right now, I'm on the right side of that zero. Press enter again. And what the graphing calculator has done here, it's created a right boundary. Okay. Now that I've established a left boundary and a right boundary right here, the calculator is saying, okay, now that you've established the left side and the right side, and that root is right there between those two lines, you press enter once more, and it lets you know where the root exactly is at. The zero, if you look right here, the zero right here, if we rounded it to the nearest tenth, is at a negative 3.4. If we round that to the nearest tenth. So one of our roots is at a negative 3.4. We're going to do this process again, and we're going to find the next root. We're going to find this root right here. So here we go. If I wanted to find this root, you hit second, trace, number two. Now I have to make a new boundary. So my left boundary, I have to move the cursor closer to the zero. So I'm moving to the right. You'll see my cursor is getting closer and closer and closer to the zero. You'll see it pop up on the screen here. There it is. Now, right now, technically, even though I'm above the zero, I am to the left side of it. So being that I'm to the left side of it, you can hit enter. And you can see how this dotted line, can you see how the dotted line is slightly to the left of the zero? Now it asks me for the right boundary. So I'm going to hit the right arrow and I'm going to go to the right side of it. So I'm going to press enter one more time. And you'll see... Well, it's kind of hard. I guess I put it right there on the x-axis, so it's kind of hard to see. But there is a right boundary <coughs> right here. You see the arrows right between there. So press enter one more time, and it lets me know where my zero is located. My zero is located 
at a negative 0.35. Now, if I round that to the nearest tenth, so if this right here, you're going to say that's at a negative 0.4. So my next zero is at a negative 0.4. Now it's at negative 0.35, but I'm rounding it to the nearest tenth, so it's negative 0.4. All right, now the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this zero right here. I'm going to find that approximate zero. So once again, you hit second, trace, number two. Now I have to once again establish a left boundary. So I'm going to move the cursor closer to the zero. So right here. So now that my cursor is closer to zero, I'm going to press enter. You'll see a left boundary is created. Now, if you're using a black and white calculator, you won't see the dotted line, but you still will see that little arrow right there. Yeah. So on the black and white calculator, the TI84 pluses, you're not going to see the cool dotted line, but you will see the arrow. Okay. Now, right now, notice I am above it, but I'm not just above it. Technically, right here, I'm above and to the right. So I'm going to hit enter, and what I want you to pay attention to is, can you guys see right now that my zero is technically between those two lines right there? If your zero is between the two lines, then the calculator will calculate the zero. That's as simple as that. If you can get the zero between those two boundaries, it will calculate your zero. So you press enter. And where does it say your zero is located? At a what? At a 1.25. We've rounded to the nearest tenth, you would do 1.3. So this zero right here is at a 1.3 comma zero. So on those questions where it says locate the approximate zeros, If you had three zeros, your solution set for all of your zeros would be negative 3.4, right there. There's your negative 3.4 comma zero. There's your negative 0.4 comma zero. And we found this zero right here to be at a 1.3 comma zero. So when it asks you to find the approximate values, you have to use the second trace button and establish your what? Your left boundary and your right boundary for each zero. Hopefully that will be useful as you guys work on this assignment.